Welcome to Reanimator Reviews. I'm Rayanne, and today I'm going to talk about the remake of Castle Freak, which is now currently streaming on Shudder. So, I'm a pretty big fan of the OG Castle Freak with Jeffrey Combs. I feel like it's a little, a little silly. It's a little bit of a cult classic. It's not really, you know, a movie that people are apt to say is my favorite favorite movie or man you gotta watch this movie like you gotta be in the right state of mind to watch that movie and you have to know what you're in for it's not going to be you know the this visually stunning experience in my opinion like you you kind of have to know what you're in for you have to know at least the premise of the story to like okay i i guess i can you know jive with this it seems like it, it's a pretty straightforward concept, I feel like, the first movie. Um, the essential plot of this movie is Becca and her boyfriend. Um, she finds out, like, she's adopted. She was orphaned as a child in, uh, I think, Albania, they said. And she learns that she has come into possession of a castle, which was her grandfather's. And since her mother has passed away, now it's hers. They are trying to kind of figure out what to do with everything. Obviously, the first instinct, as they do live in America, is to auction off everything, sell the property, you know. They're not really planning on staying there. Uh, Becca has a lot of questions about, you know, her her family in general, just because she has no background whatsoever. She doesn't know what they were like. She has no memory of them. And she's also a blind woman. So it's very, very difficult for her to kind of come to terms with things like, well, I thought my mother was, you know, poor and destitute. How, how is there a castle here? And it's, it's a lot to wrap your mind around. She can't, you know, really come to terms with her surroundings in general. But now she's having issues coming to terms with this big castle and she can't, you know, see her mother's things and fully process them. She has to use all her other senses, obviously. Navigating around the castle was probably a bit unnerving for her because she's probably expecting, you know, a smaller home, not a sprawling castle. And it seems like initially her boyfriend is very helpful. We do learn in the, you know, the opening, opening part of the movie that her blindness is his fault. 100%. He was driving under the influence and she was ejected from the vehicle and that's how she lost her sight. So it's not only her coming to terms with finding out all this weird stuff about her family. It's also her still trying to come to terms with her new vision loss and trying to come to, you know, forgive John. I, I don't know how she could do that. That, it, that seems like a really daunting task in itself because he's a hundred percent, you know, to blame. And he kind of brings it up at one point when he's, you know, trying to get, you know, snuggly with her and she's like, no, I'm not in the mood. He's like, well, you're never in the mood. Why can't you just forgive me? And it's like, my, my dude, it's not that easy. It's really not that easy. So, obviously, Castle Freak. Castle Freak is in the building. She senses Castle Freak. John, of course, doesn't believe her because this is a horror movie. <laughs> he would just be like, oh man, really? We should go. Let's go get a, you know, a hotel. And the movie would be like 15 minutes. No. So there's like a lot more layers to this story, I feel like, than the original movie. I think in the original movie, it was a husband and wife, and their daughter was visually impaired. In this, it's legit our main character who's visually impaired, and I 100% appreciate that as a visually impaired woman. To see another, you know, representation of a visually impaired woman who's not, you know, oh, help, and do this for me. She's really trying to come, you know full circle with it and figure out how to live independently because I think as the movie progresses she's realizing that she's going to have to be more independent and you know 
take charge of things because perhaps, you know, there's not always going to be someone there to cook breakfast for her or to describe things around her. Like, she's got to get it together. And that's very empowering. Um, so, yeah, the, the castle freak does emerge and we um, it's very interesting. John, for some reason, enlists his friends that we saw initially in the flashback beginning part of the movie with the accident that they were partying with to help, you know, go through everything and get it ready for auction, which Becca's not like super excited about. I don't think that she's ready to really spend quality time with these people. And even though she's assured that there's going to be no alcohol, no recreational substances, she's still like, oh, well, really, like, do we, do we need them? Like, is that really the best idea? And they bring another female that she is 100% not really excited to see, not really comfortable seeing, and you get the feeling that there's something going on there. So, um, that's like the gist of the movie without giving any spoilers. They're gonna be going through the house, they're going to encounter the castle freak. She keeps saying that she senses someone, there's someone in the room, and of course John doesn't believe her, and there's always this, you know, fake news fact that once you lose one sense, your other senses get better. That's that's wrong. You just rely on your other senses a whole lot more, so you're more in tune with your hearing. So you're going to pick up on things that maybe fully sighted people that are using all of their senses equally aren't going to be like, oh yeah, I heard that scratching too. Like that's totally a castle freak in our walls. Like that's definitely what's going on. So he's just like, no, well, she's got this, this super sensitive here. No, she's just learning to adapt. That's fine. Um, there is, I, I don't think this was in the original, Becca has visions while she's sleeping and then also while she's waking of things that she could not possibly have known or inferred, like they're 100%, you know, paranormal kind of things happening because she wasn't, you know, informed of how her mother passed away. John asked the person that we presume is from like a realty company that's managing the castle, you know, what happened and he very strangely uh, pantomimed, you know, self-flagellation and he was like, oh, okay, so there's no way that Becca would have known that because I don't think John wanted to have her know that information and spare, you know, her feelings and her anxieties about her family. So that was interesting. I'm going to leave it off here as it is spoiler free. What did I like about this movie? I liked that someone like actually did their homework into visual impairment of you walk in a room with someone that's visually impaired in like any movie and they just act like, you know, whatever. You're just walking around. They walk in and she goes, can you describe it to me? Or he will start to describe the room without being prompted because he's obviously used to living with a blind woman. That was like, yes, finally, finally you have that, you know, realism. Like when you have a level of visual impairment where you're missing out on details of everyday life, it is so helpful to have someone close to you in your life or, you know, people in general around you, you know, they're looking at something on their phone like, oh, this is so funny. Can you describe it to me? Can you tell me what the picture, sh picture says? Can you tell me what the caption says? You know, when posting things on social media, put, a, put an image description so everyone can enjoy it. So I thought that was really cool because obviously someone had the foresight to be like, oh, we're starting out this movie with a blind character. We should make it more realistic when they were, you know, she had her cane, which sometimes people choose not to have a cane. Sometimes people choose to have a guide dog. That it, I thought it was really cool that they added, you know, sometimes she'd use it, sometimes she didn't. Totally her choice, totally any choice of any person that's visually impaired. When they would lead her around, I think they did the best they could with the settings and everything. I feel like her being led by John was very, very different than her being led by the guy from the reality company because he's probably not experienced in how, you know, you're supposed to 
just have the person, you know, touch your arm. Not so much like hold their hand in a very creepy way, but maybe he was just like, I'm going to do everything I can and make direct eye contact with the person while you're talking. All these little things I picked up on, obviously, and I thought it was really, really cool and I was really happy to see that. I liked that there was so much like HP Lovecraft mythos wound into this movie, shoved in our faces. I I was so happy. I, I loved, you know, them talking about the lore, them finding the Necronomicon and breaking it down for people that maybe aren't familiar with it. However, I feel like if you're watching this movie, you're like, yeah, duh, Necronomicon. I know what that is. But it was really cool. You know, they, they flipped through it a little bit. They, they had it linked to events that were going to happen in the near future. It was really, really cool. Um, them mentioning Miskatonic University. Like, we love that place. That's great to hear. There is a bonus scene after the credits roll before, like, the, the regular, you know, scrolling credits. And please stay and watch it because you're going to be like, oh, like, is this leading somewhere? Are we going to have perhaps another movie? We'll see. Um, there is a lot of stuff in this film that is not in the original film. As I remember it, I really need to rewatch that movie that just totally like makes every HP Lovecraft fan so stoked and happy. And I feel like I just watched, I, I feel like I was really happy to watch this movie because I just watched like a documentary about HP Lovecraft last night. And just already in that, that mindset of, you know, I want to reread some stories. I want to rewatch some movies and then this. So this was like a joy to watch in that aspect because I was already like HP Lovecraft mindset, Cthulhu, everyone, relay, we're ready. But, uh, yeah, I, I felt like, you know, they did, they, it, it's hard to translate HP Lovecraft into film for sure. There are a lot of flops. There's, you know very few movies that really can pull it off, especially with not the highest budget. So what did I dislike about this movie? Um, the pacing, it seemed, was a bit off. It seemed like there was a large amount of time before all the friends arrive that was kind of just like filler, like to pad out the movie. And then, of course, the real action starts when the friends get there and, you know, there's all this tension and drama and they're learning things. One of the friends is, they call him the professor and he's the one that has his hands on the Necronomicon. Like, this is priceless. Like, you don't understand what you have here. And he was just like, so, so invested in it, which was kind of creepy. But I felt like, you know, the leading up to the friends getting there, it was probably like two, three nights of them just like, oh, she's laying in bed, she has a vision, and the castle freaks like creeping around, peeking out at people, you know. You don't you don't need all the filler. I, I'm assuming perhaps it was maybe just to make the movie longer or draw draw out the the atmosphere. I'm not sure, but I felt like that could have been cut a whole lot. Like it didn't need to be the longest movie, you know, I feel like the movie would have been great with that missing, but that's me. Some of the, the shots when there's action, particularly towards the, the latter part of the movie, did that weird thing where they're thrashing and it just pauses. I know they do that a lot in, what was it? Like Halloween to Rob Zombie's version. And you're just like, Hmm. Hmm. It kind of takes you out of it. Like, I want to see action. Just keep the camera going. Don't do those weird pause things. That's unnecessary. There were um, a lot of tentacles in this movie, so that, that was cool. But um, another bonus, like, like, this movie is pretty brutal. Maybe they don't show all of it, but they show the aftermath of it, particularly a part with tuberculin syringes that you were just like, ouch, ouch. That, that's a part to look for. Um, I mean, I had a good time watching this movie. I feel like some of it was a bit, you know, over the top hokey. Took me a little bit out of it. But it was, you know, for the most part, a very strong story. I felt like the characters were pretty strong. 
I, of course, you know, really appreciated Becca's character. Um, I thought they didn't do the, the Castle Freak dirty. The Castle Freak looked good. The, the gore was great. The violence was great. The continuation of, you know, H.P. Lovecraft's legacy was great, of course. I just... I had a really good time watching this movie. I would definitely watch it again. I, like I said, I'm probably going to rewatch the OG version and compare and contrast a little bit. I'd probably give this like a three out of five. Would watch again. I really hope that they go in the direction they're going with the little, you know, sneaky part at the end that they stuck in there. And uh, I can't wait to see what else will come. This was a Fangoria movie, which I was pretty surprised. Like, it's nice to see Fangoria back. I hope that the magazine gets back to where it used to be. Um, as I said, watch this on Shudder. I think everyone should give it a shot. If you're into the original, if you're into H.P. Lovecraft, you know, give it a watch. Let me know what you think. Leave me a comment down below. What are your thoughts? Um, very tired cat next to me. If you have not yet, please do subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you. You can follow me on Facebook at Reanimator Reviews, Twitter, Instagram, and now TikTok at Reanimator. You can find my solo reviews as well as reviews with the groom in podcast form on iTunes. Thank you to the Farsighted Network. Please don't forget to check out all of their awesome creators and content as well. And I hope everyone's doing well, staying well, and uh, enjoying the winter, I guess. It's just, it's cold and it's stupid. And I hope y'all are great. I'll see you later. Bye. Welcome to Reanimator Reviews. I'm Ran, and I'm going to talk about, I don't know if this audio is good. Hold